In order to make this most gorgeous ripple granny shawl, we will need a five weight yarn and I am using the Premier Puzzle Yarn. This is one of my most favorite um, five weight yarns. I love the feel of the yarn. I love the drape of the yarn. I love the colorways of almost every single colorway that they offer. And um, this one is in Riddle. And um, it's just a beautiful combination of grays and blues. And I am so in love with this color. So I can't wait to see this work up. The other thing you'll need, um, you'll need a needle to, um, you know, to stitch up your ends at the end of your work. So I keep mine in this, this little container here designed for holding needles. I'll put that to the side. You may or may not need um, something to measure either in you know centimeters or in inches um, because you are going to determine how long you want this shawl to be um, you know if you're making it for someone who is slim and um, does not need that much to wrap around them you won't need to make it as long um, you know for for me um, I am um, you know, a larger woman. And so I need a little bit more length in order to go around my shoulders and to, you know, keep me nice and warm and snugly. The other thing you'll need, a pair of scissors. Now, in case you need to cut your yarn. And the last thing would be the most important thing other than the yarn itself. And this is your hook. And this is the, um, I like to use the Clover Amore hooks, and this one is the 7 millimeter hook, and I love this hook. It is a plastic hook, um, but instead of using the metal like they do with their smaller hooks, they went to the plastic so that it wouldn't be as heavy, and I can tell you my hands really appreciate that. So let's get started. Okay. So this shawl, um, the Granny Ripple, or Ripple Granny, um, is a multiple of 18. So I am going to begin mine with a chain of 90. If you want yours to be um, a little bit larger, you want to cover you know, you want to make it a blanket size or you want to just make it larger, you would just continue adding 18 stitches. We are going to start with a slip knot and then we are going to chain a multiple of 18 and I am going to chain 90, which is 18 times five, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. And do that a multiple of, um, you know, however many times you want. Just be aware that one of these 18 stitch uh, chains will make a complete ripple. So you are going to get that size with it. Okay. All right. And I'll meet you back here. I'm going to go ahead and continue chaining 90. Um, and I will meet you back here in just a moment. Okay, I'm at 90. And so what I want to do, what we want to do is not counting the chain on your hook. You are going to count five chains. One, two, three, four, five. One. Now I can't overthink this. One, two, three, four, five. There we go. <laughs> And in the 
sixth chain from your hook, you are going to put three double crochets. One, two, three. Okay, and then the next thing you're going to do is skip the next two chains and do three double crochets in the next chain. So one, two, and three double crochets in the third chain from your hook. One, two, three. So there we go. Okay. And then what you'll do we are going to skip the next two chains one two and put three double crochets in the next chain just like we've done one two three and this is actually our foundation row okay all right, so now we are going to chain three. One, two, three. And in that same chain that we just worked three double crochets in, we are going to put three more double crochets. One, two, three. And that starts our peak. So with this ripple granny, we are always going to have two clusters of double crochets. And then we're going to have a peak that will have a cluster of a double crochet, a chain three, and a cluster of a double crochet. Okay. And then we are going to skip two chains one two and in the third we are going to put three double crochets get my yarn up here that was one two and three okay we're going to skip two and in the third we are going to do three double crochets. Okay. So this is our peak. Okay. One, two, our peak one two now we're ready to go into the valley when we hit the valley on our foundation row we are going to skip five chains and in the sixth chain we will do our double crochet cluster which is the three double crochets so one two three four five and in the sixth chain we are going to do a double crochet cluster there we go so that is going to allow for the valley okay so now we're headed back up and just as in this one we had two and then the peak and then two so this one counts as the first one we're going to do one more we're going to do a peak and then come back down okay so let's skip how many that's right two one two 
and then we're going to do a granny cluster three double crochets okay and now we're ready for our peak and I'm trying to show you this way so that it can make sense as you're doing it because then you can look at your work and you'll know where you are and what you're supposed to be doing okay so the next one what we're going to do is skip two one two and in that third one we are going to do three double crochets chain three and three double crochets and that is our peak okay you see that starting Okay, now um, I'm going to do two more clusters, skipping two chains in between each, and then I'm going to do another valley. And when I do two more clusters, because right here, we are right here, we're gonna do two more clusters. We're going to skip five chains. In the sixth chain from the hook, we're going to do a cluster, skip two, cluster skip two cluster chain three cluster skip two cluster skip two cluster skip five cluster and then we'll be going back up okay so i'm going to do this with you a little bit more we're going to skip two one two three double crochets in that third chain from your hook skip two three double crochets we're going to skip five one, two, three, four, five. In the sixth chain from the hook. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. I guess this yarn is making it hard for me to see. One, two, three, four, five, six. There we go. My eyes must not be very good this morning. All right, two, three, and that was our valley because we skipped five and now we're going back up. Skip two, go into the third chain. Ooh, nice thick yarn here coming up. Okay. And now we are going to skip two and we are going to do a three cluster. And we are going to, because this was the valley we have one, two, and then this is going to be the um, the peak. So then we chain three and crochet right back into that same stitch that we were crocheting in. There we go. 
Okay, let's take a look at it now. Mm -hmm. This is going to be pretty. So pretty. So this is what I'm going to do is continue this trend down. Um, so I am at the, the left side of the peak. I have two more clusters with two chains skipped in between. Then I skip five chains and do a cluster in the sixth, skip two, cluster, skip two, and then do the peak cluster, which is a cluster, chain three, a cluster in that same stitch. Okay, and I'm going to continue until I get to the very end. When you get to the very end, um, you should have one stitch left. And in that very last stitch, we are just going to do one double crochet. And so I will meet you back at the end right before I do that last double crochet. Okay. I am at the end of my row. I have one stitch left and I have made the uh, last cluster. I have one stitch left and in that stitch I am just going to do a double crochet. There we go. Okay, now that was our foundation row. Now our foundation row um, you know, it just sets the base for all of our stitches to come. Now this is a one row repeat. So this next row that we go through is going to be the way you do every single row from here on to the very end. Okay. So I'll go over it with you one time and it's very easy. Um, it's almost something that you can do intuitively. You don't even really need to um, keep looking at a pattern. Um, the first thing you're going to do, now remember at the end of this foundation, you've made one double crochet. So what you're going to do is chain four. One, two, three, four. Okay, and then you're going to turn your work. Okay, so I've turned my work. There we go. Okay, chain four and turn your work. Now you are going to make three double crochets between the next two three double crochet groups. So this is a double crochet group. I've been calling it a cluster and this is a double crochet group. So in between these first two right here in this space, you are going to make three double crochets. So you're going to make another double crochet group. Okay. So this is what we're going to do right in here. We're going to do one, two, three. Okay. And then between this one and the next one, we are going to make one double crochet cluster. One, two, three. Okay. Okay. Now when we get to the peak, this is what we're going to do. We are going to do three double crochets, chain three, and three double crochets. Doesn't that sound familiar? That's how we made this peak to begin with. So we're just going to continue that trend. Are you ready? Three double crochets. One, two, three. 
three, chain three, one, two, three, three double crochets. And we're doing this all in that chain three space. Okay. It's looking pretty, isn't it? Now, that was going up the mountain to the peak, and now we're getting ready to go down into the valley. Let's see what we do with this one. I'm going to pull a little bit more yarn so that I don't have to worry. Now, the next thing that we're going to do We are going to do three double crochet in here, three double crochet in here, and now in here, with this, we are going to skip this space and do three double crochet in here. Okay, ready? Three double crochets between the clusters. One, two, three. Okay, there's the peak. This is the side of the peak. This is the chain three. This is the first cluster going down our mountain. The next one, three double crochets between those two clusters. One, two, three. Okay, see that, how pretty? Okay, now, this is where the valley was. This is where that chain five was. We are not going to put anything in between these two clusters. We are going to skip this space and we are going to put a chain or a three double crochet cluster into this space. Ready? feels weird when you first start doing it. But what that is doing is allowing that V to start back up the hill to this other peak. So we're going to continue three double crochet cluster between the next two clusters. Okay, now we're at the peak. So we are going to three double crochet, chain three, three double crochet, all in that same space. Okay, now we're going back down the hill. I'm trying to give you a good picture of what we're doing. So here, this is what we've done so far. Okay, we went up, we came down, we skipped that space, then we went back up, chain three, and now we're coming back down. So between this, 
cluster and this cluster, we will put two more clusters. And then when we get to this section, which is the valley, we don't do anything with that. We go from here to here and we bring that together. Okay, so let's keep going. Okay. Three double crochets. Okay. The next stitch between these two clusters, we're going to three double crochet. The next thing we see is a valley, so we're going to skip that and go straight over to here and we are going to three double crochet in that. Okay, the next one, three double crochet. Now we're at the peak again, three double crochet. What's next? That's right, chain three. One, two, three, and then the next thing, three double crochets. That's right, you got this. Okay. Once we get the foundation chain and the foundation row completed, then everything falls into place for this glorious shawl. And this is how we are going to do every single row. I'm gonna work with this all the way to the end so that I can show you what we do at the end of this row and then I can tell you what we do at the beginning of the next row is exactly what we did here and we'll go over that one more time and so from now on if you need assistance you just rewind it slow it down do you know that uh, YouTube has a slow down button it does it has to do with those three little dots um, that are up and down. Not sure, depending on what device you're watching, um, how you can change that, where it's located, but look for those three dots and it will have a speed on there. So now we are headed down to the valley. So we're gonna do three more double crochet right here. the next one one two three and then we're at the valley so we're skipping this and we're going to go right over to here I know that feels weird because you're skipping a whole lot of work but never fear that's how we get the ripple and I am so in love with this stitch it's just so gorgeous and you know for people who aren't um, crocheters and people who are who've never done this they're gonna look at that and they're gonna say oh that is so beautiful okay here we are in the peak what are we gonna do that's right three double crochets chain three one, two, three, and three more double crochets. One, two, three. Next one, three double crochets. One, 
two, three. Okay, next one. Three double crochets. I'm going to skip the valley and go to the next one. Okay, we're going to go to the next one. We're almost at the end. Okay, now we're at the peak. Three double crochets. Chain three. One, two, three, three double crochets. All right, that's a peak. Now we have, this is the very end. So we have three clusters between this one, the first two, we are going to put three double crochet cluster. Between the next two, we are going to put a three double crochet cluster. And then at the end, we are going to go to the top of the turning chain and put one double crochet. Okay, let's do this. Okay, now here's the fun part. Okay, so we have one, two, three. That was our our um, three double crochets. So I'm going to go into this stitch right here and I am going to create a double crochet right there. Okay, so you see at the end of each row there is the equivalent of either a chain four or a double crochet. Because to start the next row, we are going to chain four. One, two, three, four, and turn our work. And that's exactly what we did at the beginning of the last row. Now, it gets a little easier to see because as you can see, we have the chain four, um, and then the spaces are a little bit more pronounced now. Do you see that? Okay, so we're going to put a cluster here, three double crochets, a cluster here, three double crochets. This is our peak. What do we do with our peak? That is correct. Three double crochets, chain three, three double crochets, all in that space. And then we go down the valley, three double crochets, three double crochets. Here is the valley and you can clearly see that valley. Do you see that valley? Do you see it? Let me hold it up like this. Move that out of the way. Okay, so we are going to do three double crochet here. And then we're skipping this and we're going into this one, three double crochet here, and that will draw the valley. There you go, just like that, okay?
And that's what you're going to do throughout this piece. And it is going to be so beautiful when you get done. I can't wait to see what colors you use. I can't wait to see, um, you know, the style that you use. Listen, if you find a chunky weight yarn in uh, several different colors and you want to do a couple rows of one color and then, um, you know, do a couple more rows of another color, you could very easily incorporate two or three different colors. Can you imagine making this for someone who likes, um, let's say, pink for instance and you had a pale pink and you had a cream and a dark pink or purple and you have a pale lavender and a cream and a dark purple like an aubergine or um, you know something like that or how about um, wine colors so you have you know a a mulled wine color and then you have a gray a soft gray and then you have another shade of wine um, you know a mulberry or something like that so many different options that you could do now I am going to continue with my premier puzzle yarn because it is going to change colors for me and you see this started out with a gray and it's going to a deeper blue and I'm just in love with this because the way it flows with the colors I am all about that and it's making it easy because I am not going to have to change my um, my colors but changing colors is not a big deal and if that's what you want to do I would definitely go for it so I hope that you have a great time making this ripple granny shawl I hope that you enjoy it and I hope that you are able to do this um, you know while you're watching TV or while you're visiting with family it's something that doesn't you don't really have to count just the threes um, you know three double crochet three double crochet and you don't have to um, you know make once you get this foundation row you are golden because the only thing you have to count would be this chain in the peak right here and you know I think we all got this it's three 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 we skip that um, that valley right there I think we can do this so guys happy happy crocheting and stay safe be kind and get hooking have a great one